We're going to call the meeting to order this evening. If we could stand for a moment of silence and a salute to the flag. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. I just want to mention that the uh, board this uh, evening held an executive session down at the administrative uh, building uh, from uh, 6 till 7 to review uh, uh, personnel agenda items. <coughs> we can now move on to uh, board member comments. Um, and before I entertain any board member comments, I do want to uh, mention this evening, I want to recognize our junior representative, Sarah Glatz, uh, for her service to the board. Sarah has just completed two years as a student rep to the board, and we look forward to her return next year as a senior representative. Sarah is uh, participating in the WPIL track and field qualifiers next week, and will be unable to attend our legislative meeting. So is it j javelin or shot put, whatever? Uh, no. Oh, okay, great. This is mine, I, right? I, I, just, mm -hmm. I just want to say just a few words about Sarah, if you'll uh, allow me here. Sarah has been chosen to participate in the University of Pittsburgh's prestigious Cancer Institute Academy, a summer program noted for its research focused on and observational learning. Sarah is the first American chosen to participate at the program site in Bonn and Cologne, Germany, an opportunity only open to German-speaking students. A maximum of 12 students are selected from around the globe for the program. Uh, that's incredible, Sarah. That really is. That's just incredible. She will be based at the Center for the Integrated Oncology, a joint comprehensive cancer center of the University of Cologne and Bonn, which focuses on leukemias and lymphomas. She will spend a month studying under the direction of noted physicians and researchers, Dr. Michael Halleck and Dr. Cornelia von Levitzau. Is, is that how you pronounce that? Close enough, right? <laughs> Just want to be sure. I'll go back there and get. It's all German now. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Established in 2009, the academy encourages rising high school students, such, such as Sarah, interest in cancer careers, instills knowledge of cancer biology and clinical care, and develops students' research and communication <laughs> skills. Uh, Sarah, that's incredible. I, I, I congratulate you on your on your achievements. That's that's just wonderful. That is that what you think you might be doing when you leave North Hills? Do it. Yeah, probably. Wonderful. Great idea, Sarah. I do have a, I do have a card here if you don't mind coming up that we'd like to recognize you and thank you for service this year, Sarah. Thank you so much. One of the accomplishments. That's that's once again, Sarah. Congratulations. Just that's great news. Okay. Um, now we could. Uh, are there are other board member comments. Mr. Nudie, I think you have one, and then I we'll do. I have a. Let me show you this T-shirt, the green T-shirt that we wore at the Capitol last week for the Legislative Ad Advocacy uh, Day. Uh, this is a takeoff from something that was seen last year. Uh, charter schools had kids and adults running around in purple um, uh, T-shirts uh, competing with us for time with the representatives. So PSBA thought it would be a good idea to do something similar, so they put the green, uh, except the charter school weren't, people weren't showing up, weren't, weren't to show up until the following day. Uh, but actually worked out pretty well if anybody's been to the Capitol and had to visit several places, that place wasn't planned, it just happened. Mm -hmm. And getting around there, uh, from you, you, you would meet the a representative in one wing and a senator in another rent wing. So with these green shirts, they had PSBA people <laughs> policing us up and herding us to the appropriate places we were supposed to go. Now, the... Uh, a very short report on what happened uh, at the uh, uh, at the uh, advocacy uh, forum. We got a general impression that 
both sides are going to work hard to have a budget by uh, uh, July 1st. Um, a lot of talk about uh, uh, pension reform, and there must have been at least four or five uh, legislators who have their own bills in work. No specifics, but they have their own bills in work for pension <coughs> reform. So I think we're going to see something happen, happen on pension reform, but I have a feeling it's not going to be substantive. It's going to be pretty much somewhere what they did, what, four years ago, five years ago. Um, as far as uh, charter schools concerned, uh, I think we'll see some movement there in um, uh, our reimba reimbursement cost. I don't think it's going to make it down to where the governor wanted to put roughly. It's a $5,950 uh, cap uh, per, per student, which would save us somewhere in about 400000 a year. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Pat? Okay. I think some of the legislators who have been receiving money from these charter school organizations are feeling a little, pr little bit of pressure, and they're probably going to bend to some extent and maybe go from somewhere up around $7,000, $8,000. But uh, we're not going to see that uh, $6,000 uh, uh, level that the, uh, uh, the governor has proposed. Uh, and I think that that $6,000 uh, number is uh, uh, legitimate. Uh, what they did is they went, they took the numbers that the, that four or five uh, IUs are uh, uh, charging, or the, the cost that four or five IUs uh, are incurring for their charter schools, and they're roughly in the area of about $4,500. Uh, here at North Hills, I think we're in the area of 3500 so if you take that $4,500 in cost and say, well, go to $6,000, that's a $1,500 per student margin, which I think is fairly uh, reasonable and should be acceptable to everybody. But uh, it wouldn't be the cash cow that it is right now. And uh, I have just to say that the charter school reimbursement uh, 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 program is, uh, I guess, let's say, what do you call it, capitalism, uh, the, uh, yep. the, the, the term just slips my mind. Mm -hmm. What is it, it's, it's, it's the, uh, where the, the government is? Uh, crony uh, capitalism. Crony capitalism or just? Yeah, crony capitalism. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's all crony, crony capitalism. So, well, thank you. Thank you. That's, that's Hello. It. Thank you. That's the cyber charter schools, correct? Not the charter schools. Yes. Well, they both get reimbursed at the same rate. Oh, okay. So, so, so all of it would be changed then to the six thousand. No, the, the brick Just, and mortar would be uh, brick and mortar charters would be at a, in a different pro, uh, okay. program. Okay. Right. So thank you're you. Talking about uh, cyber charter. Okay. Thank you. And you'll see later on under community and intergovernmental relations that we have a resolution that talks about the cyber charter schools and the reform that we're asking for. Um, it's something that other school districts are asking for. But in that reform, uh, or in this resolution that we're asking for, you can see the outlay of this district and its financial dollars to cyber charter schools over the last, I think we did five years, which is a significant number. <coughs> Mr. Kelly. Uh, thanks, Mr. Wilkes. Uh, I, I just wanted to take this opportunity to, uh, to thank Chris Nolan from the uh, parent-teacher organization at Westview and uh, also District Judge uh, Richard Opiella and, and all the members of the uh, various parent-teacher organizations who um, sponsored the Meet the Candidates Night uh, on Tuesday uh, over here at the high school auditorium. It was, a, it was uh, well done by everybody there, including uh, a sparse turnout, but nonetheless a turnout uh, uh, just the same. And uh, we welcomed the questions and were able to um, to give the voters an opportunity to meet the candidates and to uh, be able to ask them questions. So my thanks again to the parent-teacher organization. And to add to that, I would just like to once again apologize for not being able to be there. Uh, I was very ill and um, knew I couldn't talk, which you might see me miss my voice now. I uh, wish I had the opportunity, but uh, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, we can now move on. To, uh, 
Anybody signed up under public? Uh, no. None. Thank you. Let's move on to education, and that would be uh, Mrs. Bender. Uh, the Education Committee, the first item on the agenda is the High School Planetarium, the Digital Immersion Theater Project, and the Cove Lighting Upgrade. Are there any questions about this? It's been much needed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and uh, that was addressed already with the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second item on the agenda is the Spectroscopy Society of Pittsburgh Chemistry Grant. Did I say that correctly? <laughs> I see <laughs> Joe Muha smiling. I thought maybe I said it incorrectly. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have uh, any questions about that? Yeah, I just had a question. I, I think it's great. I, it, we're getting three spectrophotometers for free. Uh, we just uh, this is a grant the Spectroscopy Society does. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ebert wrote the, the grant in the fall and applied for it, and um, luckily he he was awarded the grant. So I think it's an excellent opportunity. Yes, I agree. What what are these like uh, microwave size or something like? They'll be I all in the same classroom, or um, they will be used in our chemistry classes. Um, I'm not too sure of the size and the dimensions of them. Okay, no, this is great, this is good, really good. Third thing is Adel Adelphi, I can't say that. Adelphi. Adelphi. Education Service Agreement, the 2015-2016 school year. Are there any questions about that? Last, the 2015 Environmental Education Grants Program. No questions about that? I would like to make a motion to add the education items to the legislative meeting agenda for approval. Second. So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to technology. Uh, it looks like there we don't have anything updating unless, Mr. Muhal, you have anything you might want to add? Uh, yeah. there, there's nothing on the agenda, but I do have a statement to make. Okay. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that the next phase of our district's innovations and in education plan is taking place. All K through six teachers are receiving iPads this week. They will be used for teaching and learning across all subject areas. Teachers will have the opportunity to register for professional development sessions for two hours each Wednesday throughout the summer. Summer school for teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, these lunch and learn sessions will provide teachers with in-depth knowledge on how to integrate the iPads into the curriculum. <coughs> that's it. So that's it. Okay. That's it for Thank technology. You. All righty, uh, let's move on to, uh, I guess it will be athletics and activities. That will be Dr. Nolish. Thank you. Um, we have two items for the to propose being placed on the agenda tonight. The first is a resolution, which is a recognition of the girls' basketball boosters as an official booster organization of the North Hill School District. And you'll recall we've done this for a number of other booster organizations, which enables them to move forward um, in uh, non various nonprofit and small games of chance uh, opportunities to uh, better support their students. So we are recommending that we adopt that resolution and recognize their organization. The second item is the Allegheny Health Network Sports Medicine Agreement. And this is sports medicine services for the students who are student athletes. And uh, they, the uh, sports medicine services will come through, the con they provide our contracted athletic trainers through the Allegheny Health Network. And this is a five-year agreement that will begin on July 1st, 2015 and run through June 30th, 2020. So at this time, I would like to make a motion to add those two agenda items, those two items to the legislative meeting agenda. Second. I have one question. Oh, Please. Okay. Um, how was the, uh, this agreement arrived at? Is this done on a competitive basis or is strictly a... Uh, uh, the sports medicine agreement? Pardon me? The, the agreement. <coughs> is, is this bid competitively be, with, with uh, say, UPMC or... No, I believe we have a contract with them that is up for renewal. Um, we have not, um, to my knowledge, sought out other competitors if they want to come in and do that. This is with the trainers that we have in our athletic department. Um, it renews their contracts so we can continue their services so they can support our students. Okay. okay. We've used them for many years. We have. And the district, to the best of my knowledge, has been very happy with them. Mm -hmm. And so have the parents. And they've been everywhere and have helped met numerous students with uh, problems that they incurred, you know, with their sports accidents. So I have no problem maintaining our relationship with them. They, they 
serve in professional development capacities, concussion clinics, um, various various professional development for our teachers. Um, so I, they, they do a great job. Oh, they do. And they, they cover us very well, too. Okay. So I guess we need to. Uh, so I guess I need to make a motion. If Sorry, you don't mind, jump the Sorry. jump the gun a little bit. Are there any other questions? Okay. Um, so let me now then make a motion to add these two items to the athletics from the athletics and activities uh, to the legislative meeting agenda. Okay. Second. Sure moved. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nolish. Let's move on to uh, A. W. Beatty. Would that be Mrs. Bender or Mrs. Reed? Which one do you want to? Mrs. Bender, you can go first with the budget. I would love to do that. Thank you. Um, this evening, uh, we will be adopting the preliminary budget. A part of that budget is the A.W. Beatty budget. Um, I, um, the superintendent recommends, and I so move, that we approve the A.W. Beatty Career Center 2015-2016 operating budget. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? <coughs> Just like that. No discussion. I would like to just ask the superintendent Please. and Dave Hall um, about, and we had some concerns last year about the quality of information that was being shared from Beatty. And my understanding is that that has been much improved over the past year. Um, we, and I would like just, I think, you know, I'd like to have you address that for everyone. We had two budget meetings with um, Dave was a part of it. Their business manager was a part of it. Several superintendents and business managers from the other nine northern area schools. Um, and then... We asked for um, some information about actual spending to budget, and we received some of that information. Um, some of the other things that I think helped to this is that um, in areas that they did over budget, we received a refund um, in things from last year's budget. So um, I'm comfortable with the budget. Their increase is exactly where our increase is. It's PEASERS. It's, it's employees. It's, uh, so um, I'm comfortable with where it is right now. <laughs> Um, and I'm comfortable with the number that it, it currently is. And I believe you also all know that I've been appointed, right? I think As so. the superintendent yeah. of record moving forward. And that will give me an opportunity to really dig in um, to the finances and really help to, to move us forward in that direction. I think Beatty's a wonderful place. I think they do amazing things. And I was really happy with the tour that we had out there when we did the board meeting out there. And we will definitely do that again in the future. Um, fantastic things are happening there. Um, and... If this is what it costs, great. And that's the question. Is, is this what it costs? And it appears that it, it is. So um, it's going up, but so too are everybody's costs when you add the employees into the, into the game. It's, it's PEASERS, and we know that. So I'm very comfortable with it. Um, you're right. There were reservations last year. I had concerns last year. Um, and I'm supporting this budget. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? So you made a motion already already? Yes, okay. I did. Do we have a second, second. please? Second. Thank you. Second. All in second. favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Just Can one thing. Uh, there is you. at everyone's place, it's a piece of paper that we um, have to show what our, that we voted, approved or disapproved, and your signature. So uh, if you would do that and pass that down. To me, I will in turn give it to Lori, who will send it to Baby. Okay, thank you. And thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Is there any? Now, yeah, there is a couple of things. Kathy, what were you going to say so I don't? Well, you can uh, keep going if you have more to say. The only thing is that there are, just as in our high school, there are many things coming up at Baby that I thought I'd like to share with you. On May 1st, which is tomorrow morning, is what is called the Spring Flink. The spring fling is done by the Chinese uh, women who teach the Chinese, Mandarin Chinese at Beatty. I was happy to learn we have no students this year, but I was happy to learn we had five students sign up for the program next year. It's wonderful and it's good. On um, J uh, May 5th, there's going to be a job career day at Beatty. And, and this is just to show you all of the things that are being done for our students. It's not, and, and I think we have to keep that in mind. On May 27th is senior recognition. They literally have a graduation uh, ceremony for them. It's called senior recognition. This year it's at Shaler <coughs> at seven o'clock. So if anybody wants to come, oh, please yeah. do. 
uh, we do, there are representatives from the various schools who do come there. Great. And um, that's basically all I wanted to say. Do you have something else? I just have one quick Please. thing. Okay. okay, I believe this girl here needs to be recognized. Her, she's a senior, her name is Natasha Connick. Mm -hmm. She has received the gold first place setting for cake decorating at the FCCLA. And when they honored her at Beatty, at this point in time, she's been to so many competitions, she already has $10,000 money in scholarships. So I thought maybe if we could invite her Mrs. Reed, to recognize we, her, maybe she'd bring us a piece of cake or something. <laughs> <laughs> she is, she's Whether on the agenda to be recognized next week with a few other yeah. baby students. Oh, good, good, mm -hmm. thank you. And, a cake. And, and they're also going to bring, uh, are, are more coming, Mrs. Rigger? There are three other students from Beatty um, who will be recognized from their Skills USA. Okay. Right, um, and that's good. And, and I think it's also, we should be aware of the fact that they have a National Technical Honor Society. Yeah. Just as, like, just as we have our Honor Society here. We had five students inducted. One of those students is also going to be inducted here. Inducted He's not here. only... He's not only inducted at Beatty, but he's but also, also going to be inducted at the high school. Great. Well, I'm so glad she's coming. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's it. Thank That's you. great. Thank you. Great report. Um, we're, we, we will now move to uh, personnel, and that would be Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Wilgus. Um, I, I did want to uh, mention. Um, I believe this came up uh, at the uh, candidates meeting the other night or, or at least alluded to the fact uh, to the question as to whether or not our deliver or all of our deliberations uh, open uh, to the public at meetings such as this and the short answer is yes with the exception of personnel items and um, there are various reasons for that not the least of which is to make sure that all of uh, anyone involved in and personnel issues uh, have the protections that, that, that they are uh, accorded under the law. So um, items pertaining to personnel activity are uh, discussed in executive session and they in this evening included resignations and appointments. So uh, having said that, I would like to make a motion that uh, items one and two be added to the legislative uh, agenda for, uh, for a vote. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, could I add something here? Please. Uh, whenever I have attended uh, a few PSEA, um, I don't want to say conventions, but learning, it has been brought up there in regard to school districts that don't provide the information to the public. Mm -hmm. A lot of them do. Yep. And there's numerous reasons as to why they do. They'll put it up on a screen, you know, appointments, resignations, and therefore that gives it the people an opportunity to speak yay or nay or whatever but it's apparently it's up to each district mm -hmm. as to what they want to do but some <laughs> do I don't I never look deep into it to see which sure. ones I think we're working toward that just so everybody knows when we purchase board docs yeah. there's a feature called scoreboard mm -hmm. and scoreboard does exactly what, what? you said yeah um, and I, I think it would be good. I think to me then everything is out in the open. There's nothing behind closed doors per se. I think we have a paper copy of everything we do out there though, right. correct? Yeah, but yeah. not with the personnel. They're not on there. Even on personnel it wouldn't yeah. be on there. Yeah, who's hired? No? No. No, no. 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 after no. the action statement. Okay. Okay, thank right. you thank for you, listening Reed. to me. I have a quick question. Please. On the, uh, the hiring <laughs> of the summer literacy uh, people. Um, I had asked the question if that would there be an option for parents who work to have an evening option for this program. Was that explored, and, is, and what's the status of that? It was explored, and um, I, Marilyn, unfortunately, is not here, and she's the one that explored that option. But I don't believe that there was an interest in moving it to the evening, that, um, that there wouldn't be enough to take advantage of that opportunity for it to be feasible. There wouldn't be enough students interested or enough teachers interested in Enough that? students and parents interested in that evening option. Where was the, were they were the parents asked? I'm not sure how Marilyn handled that, but I know she did investigate it. But how, who, 
What? I don't okay. know that part well. of it. You would you would have to ask her. All right. Well, I will. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we could now move on. The policy, it doesn't appear there's anything there, Mrs. Reed. So. No, there's uh, nothing tonight. Uh, Mr. Yeomans, if you could take community and intergovernmental relations. Sure. As, uh, as was alluded to earlier, we uh, do have a uh, resolution uh, that we would like to um, add to the agenda for next week. Um, I don't, I've looked at it. I wonder if it's, I don't know if it's worth reading it. Mm. Yeah, it's fairly long, but yeah. es essentially it, it, it says that uh, the, the funding formula for ch cyber charter schools does not reflect the actual costs to educate those children. And uh, um, one question that I would like to, and it shows the chart that shows from fiscal 910, uh, our costs for paid to cyber charter schools have gone up from about $650,000 uh, in 910 uh, to $850,000 uh, in, in the past uh, fiscal year, so you can see the, the increase is, is significant. Um, my question is, are we the only district passing these kind of resolutions? Is there is there a value to joining together with districts rather than just, you know, districts here or there voicing their concern? It's a great question. There's a number of districts that are um, adopting similar resolutions and, okay. and sending them to their legislators and senators. I think it's a matter of um, <coughs> we're really a week early in terms of May board meetings as this is our first, this is our May work session. So I'm hopeful that other districts take advantage of their May board meeting and do a similar resolution and send that to. Well, I'm to wondering if there's maybe a, a, the possibility of a regional or, or even countywide or some, some way for the districts to pool their voices to, to really let, let the legislators and the governor know that we're, we're you know, serious yeah. about this. Tom, is this something that the IU board would consider or could consider because now you're talking yes. about all schools in Allegheny County? Yes, I, I think um, the easiest way is probably to let Dr. Linda Hippert mm -hmm. know of our interest and see if perhaps they could coordinate uh, activity like that because if it's just you know districts doing it on a scattershot basis uh, you know, it, it might be easier for the legislators to not necessarily ignore it but if, if it's sure. coming from everyone that is that could you I, I will see her tomorrow mm -hmm. no. I can definitely get this to her tomorrow and discuss it with her sure because okay. this this could be an easy win for us as yeah. we pointed out in our budget discussions uh, of all the things go happening uh, as Lou pointed out, all the different legislative things happening, this is one area of low-hanging fruit that could really benefit our district if, if we can get some movement on and it. And it was the focus of the conversation I had with um, Senator Velakovich when we met maybe three weeks ago now. Um, and following that meeting, in the thank you that I wrote him, I emphasized that, but then I also sent that letter mm -hmm. to all of our legislators and senators that, uh, so hopefully that they can see that this is something, and it's not just us. It's everybody in the educational community that that one particular line item will benefit. And we're talking about public taxpayer dollars that are on this chart to the tune of, as you said, from 650000 in 910 to year to date, $850,000. Uh, we're projecting that even higher next year. Uh, that's money that's being taken away from us to educate the students. And they're not even here. getting the, the, same, the same quality education. And that's in, my in biggest instances. issue with that is when you compare school performance profiles of the cyber charter schools with the school performance profiles of the buildings that they would attend in this district, they're from anywhere between 30 and 40 and 50 points apart from each other. Okay. One more comment. Um, in the late legislative advocacy, I dropped off that letter to about five legislators along with the uh, tabulation of the uh, performance of the uh, uh, cyber school uh, to North Hills performance uh, and it was an eye-opener to a few of the legislators that uh, they didn't realize the situation was uh, the performance uh, particularly was as, as bad as it was and I have one uh, one question on the uh, uh, the chart that we have the tabulation we have um, are we saving any money with the result of the our cyber school Absolutely. Any one of those students who chooses a cyber education and chooses to do it with North Hills 
that's eleven thousand dollars that we're not sending to a cyber school. How, how many do we have um, in the program now? Twenty. Seven through twelve. Seven through twelve will be set. Because I, I see the uh, uh, the cost seem to be escalating from two thousand nine and ten up to. Uh, uh, well, last year the uh, went from uh, up basically three hundred thousand dollars in three years. Um, okay. Right. Is, is there a reason for that fluctuation? Families are choosing PA cyber and other cyber programs as opposed to the opportunities in this but, district. But I, I, I do want to make school choice yeah, movement. Not to interrupt, but I, I, I believe that Dr. Taylor, every family that chooses to do take that option, Dr. Taylor speaks to personally and gives oh, yeah. that family the facts of what's going on from the charter school perspective and ours as regards to performance. So the families that are going into this are doing it after we've explained the facts on, on, on the school performance between us and them. So there's, and if they're still making that choice, obviously they have the right to do so, which I, I certainly honor and I, I know we all do, but uh, he does c contact every family to, before so they make a, that choice. And I know there's a, a significant number of students who um, normally would be homeschooled, so mm -hmm. so it's not like a dissatisfaction maybe with right. North Hills, but right. it's just an That's interest true. in being That's homeschooled, and this is an option to do. Mm -hmm. there, there, if I may, mm -hmm. there is, of course, Mr. Kelly, a personal preference um, that some families do choose, but I do know that Dr. Taylor reaches out. Um, we do have a mailing annually that we send to all students in cyber schools, um, charter schools, so they are up to date and privy with information um, from their, their home school, what their potential home school will be, whether it's the middle school, the high school, elementaries. Um, so they're up to date and they are felt uh, welcome within this district at all time. I know that he reaches out to them annually. Um, it's not just a, a one stop that he will try to reach out to these families. So there is every attempt to make sure that they do understand um, the education they are receiving, the education potentially they could receive and the other, the other attributes that our district does provide. possibly put an ad in our annual report okay like PA cyber puts in their annual re uh, the, uh, out on the street publicizing uh, uh, North Hills um, cyber school well at this time the annual report is going to the printer tomorrow morning <laughs> so I, I think the annual report <laughs> is the ad and it, and the it really entire is. annual report right. is about who we are and our accomplishments and but, but the, PA the cyber is, has a uh, uh, an ad budget <laughs> that we find. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, like Period. <laughs> but the thing, the thing is, maybe a focused, focus the, uh, and the, think about focusing it, focusing it next year, and maybe infer that the people who are choosing this are depriving students in, in North Hills of uh, an education. But I, That's I a have good to point. We, we personally wrote a letter to families that are in cyber and charter schools with the comparison. So in, let's just use Ross Elementary as an example. Um, if you are a cyber charter school family that would attend Ross, you received a letter that had Ross school performance profile and the charter school or cyber school school performance profile where you're sending your child. And I think it speaks for itself. At that point, it's a choice. High performing or low performing. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's a letter between the, uh, the district and the individual. I think there should be a letter to the community mm -hmm. that they well, should recognize how much it's costing us. I believe that, Madam. I, I also, two to three years ago, that was the entire theme of the annual report. The annual yeah. report for the entire year was Choose North Hills. Right. And it was on our cyber options and all of those different things. So it's not that we haven't done that. And, it's, and we've actually took in, taken, taken steps on our website. The online academy is broken out as its own school. It, there's, there's lots of detail for anybody that's interested in finding that. We promote it a lot. Dr. Taylor talks to the media he, all the time about our cyber education. We're, we're one of the leaders in the area, and it is well known to people that we are leaders in the area. Um, so we have tried in different options. It's just this annual report is definitely done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I would like to, a, motion, uh, a motion to add uh, the resolution uh, to the legislative meeting agenda. Second. Second. All right. Thank Just you. Just one other quick item. Sure. Um, apparently, uh, 
Dr. Shelby Stuman from uh, Carnegie Mellon, the, the uh, person that we hired to do the demographic study to give us an idea of uh, where we can expect um, uh, our student, elementary student population to be over the next four to five years or so. He's, he's contacted the district and uh, indicated that he has some information to share. Uh, so he's uh, going to schedule a, uh, a time to, to sit down with, uh, with Dave uh, in uh, the middle of uh, ne next month, middle of May, to, to review the, the preliminary numbers and, and uh, really pour over the data and look at the district maps and start to, uh, start to see uh, uh, you know, where, where and how the population is, is going to be affected for our four elementary schools uh, based on uh, uh, Dr. Stuman's studies. And then as uh, Dr. Manorino has uh, indicated before, once we have a handle on, on the data and, and what some uh, potential alternatives could be for um, uh, a, an adjustment to the boundaries, we will set up uh, meetings uh, at, at the, the affected schools so we can present that information uh, to the parents and uh, and ensure that uh, yeah, it's it's an, a very open and uh, uh, an open process where people's voices can be heard. When when will the full board be notified of Dr. Stuman's? Well, I findings? imagine if uh, it would be the next meeting, I would think after Dave sits down with him, I would think. So that wouldn't be till the begin the June seventh meeting. I wouldn't even think we would have it that early. I would have to say probably the August meeting because we don't meet in July. You know, June we are June fourth and eleventh. We don't meet in July, and we have an August. I wouldn't say fifteenth in that area. Thirteenth. Thirteenth. Now, so. when the board receives this information, are we going to then be given um, areas where there may be redistricting? I don't think we've discussed any part of the process. All. My hope is we don't have to do anything because as we've nice. seen with um, the study that you shared with me about national trends and how there is a spike and we are at the peak of that spike. And if our populations in Ross and Westview decline like the national trend occurs and we see a significant decrease to the point where we don't have to affect any students or families, that's my hope. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? But that's a hope. So let's see what the numbers look like and, and then when we break them down into their neighborhoods and see how those demographics really impact the four schools that we have and then make the decision moving forward. But we're not going to be able to do any of that until we have his data and data broken down. And if he's going to meet with Dave in the middle of May, there's no way we're going to have that data broken into anything that we're able to really okay. work with until well after the students are gone, which is beyond Okay, I just want to be assured that I know the committees meet and whatever, that yeah. the whole board be informed not just a few. That's my concern. That's all. <laughs> I think we've stated all along that any decisions wouldn't be until very late in this year, maybe even or into early next That's year. That's true. So therefore, we won't be moving anybody for the 15th? No. Not for this fall. We said no, that from no, the beginning. No, 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 no. Okay, no. Nobody, yeah. The, okay. We're, we're comfortable with the enrollments that we have. Um, right now, uh, kindergarten is 245 at this point. Uh -huh. We are slightly under where we were with kindergarten last year. So um, again, e ending the school year, I'm comfortable with that number. Um, I don't anticipate 200, oh, no. 300 kindergarten students showing up in the next three months. I think our parents have done a nice job with registering their children for kindergarten, that we've done a nice job of publishing our kindergarten registration process, and we have a good number. Okay. Um, so that was really part of this. When you, if you remember from the beginning, is that based upon the fact that the demographic data had quote unquote expired, we had no idea how many students we would have right. coming into kindergarten. But uh, at this point, we are again less than the May 1st date right. last year. Okay. And we have said all along that if there's any changes, they would not be implemented before the 16-17. Correct. Okay. School year. Thank you. Thank you for letting the people know. Yep. You're welcome. Okay. We can now move on to uh, finance and Mr. and Mr. Burnett's absence. Uh, I'll be glad to take that uh, if it's necessary. Uh, <coughs> under finance, there is a presentation. Would that be this evening, David? That's you're right going to do that hey. right now. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. What are we doing? You have 30 seconds. Budget. <laughs> You're wasting time by walking to the podium. You know. <laughs> <laughs> should have been over there already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
try to get through this fairly quickly then. No, take your time, Dave. It's important <laughs> stuff. Okay, basically uh, the proposed final budget that's in front of you is, in fact, what in any other world would be called a preliminary budget. The state decided that in their infinite wisdom, it's to be termed a proposed final budget. So this is preliminary. Obviously, we're looking at or have scheduled a vote on June 4th for the final budget. So things can happen between now and, and that day. But as of now, uh, we've looked at the revenues and are projecting revenues at, at 73412000 before any change in the tax rate. And we are proposing a tax rate increase of 0.14 mil, which would raise $350,000, giving you total proposed revenues $73,762,680. Proposed expenditures are $74,277,665. With the difference of $515,000 being made up by using part of the fund balance that has been designed or and assigned as uh, for funding the PEASERS issue. And the next slide goes into that a little bit and forgive all the, the detailed numbers, but you've seen this uh, spreadsheet before. We have over the past few years set aside $5.5 million to help ease the increase in the last few years of the retirement costs. Down here, you can see that for next year, the uh, PISA's rate is scheduled to become 25.84% of payroll, um, which is an increase of about 25% in costs for retirement. Next year, it's to go to 29.27%, or increase another 16.67%. And then the rate of growth slows down, and it goes to 6.5%, 6.5%, 5.5%. Then you can see it's about 3% a year thereafter. What we are proposing to do is use some of the fund balance to bridge us over the first couple big years and increase our actual cost by 8.2% a year, but continue to go at 8.2% a year in those future periods. And it's a lot easier to see on the next screen with a graph. And if you look at it, the blue line is what our cost would do if we did nothing, if we just followed the state mandated increases in the pension costs. And you can see the first couple of years it has a pretty fast uh, growth. Then it slows down a little bit and then it slows down some more. And by 2023, 20, 24 reaches just under $7 million a year. The red line <coughs> is what we're proposing to do, which is increase it at a steadier rate. But by 23, 24, we still have to get to that just under $7 million figure. <coughs> The space in between the blue and the red line, that's the $5.5 .5 million being used up. That makes sense, but that allows us to reduce the total amount of revenues needed this particular year and next year. Then if you look at the tax rate that we're proposing, in the current year, the tax rate is 17.26 mills. What that means to a homeowner with the median home in this community which is a home assessed at $135,000, is their tax bill this year would be $2,330. We're proposing a tax increase of 0.14 mil, and that equals an increase in their tax bill of $19. So we're proposing for next year 17.4 mils, or a tax bill of $2,349 for the median homeowner. Then you have the homestead exemption. And I don't know this number exactly because the state has not yet released how much our gaming fund allocation is going to be for next year. But it has been essentially the same number within two or three dollars every year since the casinos opened. So I'm assuming it's going to be basically the same number next year of $1,432,830. We have for this year 11394 homesteads, so the estimated homestead exemption will be $126.
Any questions on any of that? Next steps in the process then will be on May 14th, we have our final public budget committee meeting. That's the fourth meeting. The first three were revenues, uh, non-personnel expenditures, personnel expenditures. This last one is just basically a wrap-up meeting. Go over the, the proposed final budget. Then on June 4th, we're scheduled to do the vote on the final budget, tax rate, and the homestead exemption. Thank you, David. Any questions? Yeah. I, I, no, I don't have any questions. I just, uh, well, first of all, I guess at this point we do have to vote, so uh, I do want to uh, make a motion uh, at this point that the 2015-2016 uh, proposed final budget be adopted. So I do need, I'm making a motion to that. Second. So Second. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any discussion. I, I do have just some points I want to point out, and uh, I think it's it's important that at least uh, our constituents know that. Uh, uh, Dave, you mentioned the uh, uh, P's or the uh, uh, pension issue and all that, and I, I just I, I I think I'd like to make sure that our um, our constituents are aware of this. When it comes to the the the, the cost of the pension, that's something that. We as a school district, and all school districts, have no control over. We do not decide how much we pay, how much we don't pay. That is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we basically get a bill from the state that says, here is your contribution this year. Yes, the, and, the contribution rate is mandated by the state. And it's mandated, so we have no say-so. We don't have any input on this. I mean, we can no. certainly voice our opinion. Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, I think it's imperative that our, our folks understand, which I think is a good thing. We recognized this issue several years ago, and as a result, as you said earlier, we placed $5 million in a, in a fund, if you will, that sort of lessened the blow of the cost of this thing. So it sort of amortizes that at a little, a little slower pace, if you will, but the cost is we're absorbing some of that from the money we put away from savings on top of what we have to pay. So if we didn't do that, we'd have to have you spread the $5 million out over the next 10 or 12 years and we'd have to pay what we're paying now plus the $5 million if we didn't if we didn't have that money saved. If we didn't, didn't have that, then this year we would need to raise taxes another almost $600,000 right. or cut programs or something right. exactly. to reduce costs by that right. amount. And, and couple that with the fact, if you look at, at if you look at the history of our budget over the last uh, at least 10 years, uh, if my memory serves me correct, uh, our overall spending uh, has uh, other than other than the um, the pension, our overall spending in the last 10 years has gone up an accumulative total of about 5.3 percent in the last 10 years, or five and a half percent. Am I am I is that correct? Is that I think that's excluding that, that, that the sounds, pension. That sounds about okay. right, yes. So if you, if you annualize that from 5.3% and you take it on an annual basis, our, our expenditures have gone up less than 1%, almost one half percent over the last 10 years on an annual basis, which is where we came to the 5.3%. So I think we've done all that we can uh, with respect to the uh, with respect to our budget as well as costs a lot of that had to do with planning that that this district and the administration and, and the board did over the years uh, with consolidation of schools that saved a tremendous amount of money I my estimation is two and a half to three million dollars a year uh, and that's probably light based on uh, uh, all the other costs that we're having but all that being said so when you factor all in all those issues uh, in there, uh, I think uh, what where we are today is is nothing less than short of uh, you know a, a miracle, so to speak, when it comes to try to balancing these these budgets and not hitting the taxpayer uh, in the pocketbook. Uh, so that that from our perspective is is important. I th and I, I just want to make one more point with regards to the the pension issue. I don't think anybody here, at least I'm not, but I believe everybody else is the same. And if you don't agree, please speak up. I don't believe anybody here uh, is asking for any changes to the current pension <coughs> plan. The folks that are in the pension today, we understand that's what, you, that's what you've been promised and that's what you deserve and that's what you get. Our beef, or at least my beef with the legislator, legislative body in, in Harrisburg is the fact that there doesn't appear at this point in time, I know there's a lot of talk, but there doesn't appear at this point in time any real change in in this whole process and more specifically even if it was from s some state funding to help pay for some of this so 
I don't think, I'll speak for myself, but I don't think anybody here is asking anybody who's in the plan today uh, to make a change to that. I think that it is what it is. We have, we have to live with it, and that's great, and it, it's what we have to do. But for maybe <coughs> new employees coming in, maybe there needs to be some addressing there, or maybe the folks who, who were kind enough to drop this in our lap, and I mean all school district laps, and that is the state legislature, uh, the state government, I think maybe they have to start to step up to the plate and sort of address this problem. Uh, uh, you, I'm sure they all talk about doing something about it, but at this point, just by my humble estimation, it's been all talk. But that being said, I think when you look at our overall picture, um, uh, I think uh, I think folks can be a very, very uh, uh, proud of the fact that where we are financially here with this district, and more specifically, even having money to pay for air conditioning, which is a sizable amount of money uh, in cash that we don't have to borrow, or uh, and, and we've done that to, uh, to air condition our schools. And some folks I know have said to me, why do you need to air condition the schools? And I, I understand that, but today with all the technology and everything that requires to keep, which, it, which in these buildings today, uh, air conditioning is almost a must because you have to certainly regulate the temperatures too to keep the, all the equipment going. So all that being said, I just wanted to bring that, uh, bring that uh, to date uh, for people uh, for all the millions at home uh, watching on TV. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, you, we all at least understood that, and uh, which is why where we are. So I don't know if anybody else has any comments about the budget, no. but uh, that's where we are. Mr. Good I have one statement. comment. Thank you. Who's going? You are. Okay. Uh, I have an opportunity to uh, meet with many uh, school board members from across the state, and they are absolutely overwhelmed with the fact that North Hills is maintained class size. They haven't, we haven't furloughed anyone. We're spending, we spent about $11 million on air conditioning in the last uh, uh, three years. Um, and uh, we also have $5 million in the bank for the pension fund. People are amazed. They don't know how we did it, how, how we've done it. And it, was, it, and it is, was a matter of looking down the road. And I think Mr. Hall, um, got a lot of money uh, uh, put into the capital um, uh, projects fund that that's send that, that's helped us in this area and also in the pension fund so this district pro I don't know if there's any district in the states is, is, is in better shape financially than ours mm. maybe Bucks County that's because they have more money than they can use to begin with so yeah. That's the only comment. Yeah, I do have one last comment, I'm sorry. Uh, and that is, I think a lot of this is a culmination uh, from both sides. Uh, we have negotiated a number of labor contracts over the last five to 10 years. And I'm, I'm on it. say, I, my personal opinion is uh, those labor contracts that we've negotiated with the cooperation of our teachers and all of our, our all of the unions that, that we negotiate with, I think they've been very responsible on both sides. Uh, I, I don't think anybody ever walks away from the table uh, with the fact that we won or they won, but I think if you, I can honestly say, and these these contracts are public record. If anybody would want right. to look at these things, I think they're extremely, uh, 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 very responsible contracts, and they they not only protect our educational system, but they also, uh, as I said earlier, protect the taxpayer yeah. as best we can. So uh, I just think that everybody needs to good statements, thank you. Mr. Wilkes, and thank I want to thank you, Mr. Nudie, for now looking to the future. <laughs> there was a time when you gave X amount of dollars back to the taxpayers, which probably has us lost $3 million to this point in time. I don't know. But thank you. Well, well that was a responsible may, thing to do. May I would, I would just like to I'm not going to make any more comments, but <laughs> the fact you don't understand budgeting that well, I can I do. I, can, I understand. I, I understand it, Mr. Nudie. So. Um, Excuse me. Uh, can we finish this? Yeah. Uh, I would just like to say, uh, having been on, served on the board as long as I have, I think we owe a lot of gratitude to our business manager, Mr. Hall, and the administration. Um, when Mr. Hall came here, our financial um, picture was horrendous. You talk about Mr. Happy over there? Pardon me? Mr. Yes, Happy. Mr. Happy. <laughs> and I know that. Um, we had the leaders at that point in time that looked to the future. This just didn't happen in five right. years or seven years. This has taken a long time. I always say that the one thing we have with Mr. Hall is someone 
who takes care of the district's money as if it was his own. And he has made many of our administrators fight him to purchase things. Um, and I know that some people have problems, but um, thank you for everything you've done for us. Yeah. I agree with that. Thank you, yeah, Arlene. Thank you. Mr. Kelly. Uh, it, just as perhaps a culminating thought on that, I'm looking at the list of all of the current taxing uh, millage of all the school districts in Allegheny County, and even with our proposed increase of 0.14 mil, there are only about four or perhaps five whose current millage would be lower than what right. our proposed is for next year. So assuming that at least some of them will find themselves in some difficulty, we could we could be, we will be one of the lowest in Allegheny County and perhaps the lowest. Mm. When it's all said and done, that's true. Seven. Good I, point. I, and I just stole somebody's thunder. I can okay. clarify that for you. We are number six of, I count 41, because some of them have some weird things, yes. uh, of the entire county, and we are the lowest in the nine northern area. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Okay, all that, any other discussion? Huh? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Excuse me. I yes. just to like to make a statement okay. in regard to the budget. Mm -hmm. I went to the last budget committee meeting and I was quite concerned in regard to that apparently yearly they're putting on $3,700 for additional cheerleading uniforms, which leads me to believe they're probably not cutting anybody, they're taking everybody. That's, we're on a three year recycling for uniforms. I think that's totally wrong, but that's my opinion. Number two, <coughs> we are putting as a line item this year $6,000 for band transportation. Now, the athletic office always provides transportation, but apparently they went on a few more trips they had to go on to be honored and need additional monies, which I have no problem with that. Uh, to provide them that transportation. I don't know if we need to put that $6,000 in as a line item and the monies that were already given to them from the athletic department, will that be included in the line item? Uh, I just have a concern about that, going to a line item and cheerleading uniforms in the budget every year. That's all my concern. Okay. How's that? I think you should meet with the cheerleading parents and explain. Oh, I will. Okay. I'll meet with them. Thank you. Huh? Mrs. Reed, <laughs> as long as the line I've item in the budget doesn't mean that it's spent. That's, that, that can be controlled later, so. Well, Mr. Nudy, I understand sure. that. What I'm saying is, do we need to tie up to $6,000? Looking at tonight's budget transfers again, every month we're hit with budget transfers out of Kevin Swindell's budget. I would like to see maybe him having 6000 extra because he needs, he's scrambling for money. That's well, the so administration's responsibility well, to move that money around. Yeah. I don't see any big issue. Yeah, and I think it, uh, I, all good points, but maybe afterwards, not tonight, but you yeah. might be able to want to talk with Dave about that. Yeah, I did. I've talked to okay. Dave. I <clears> called him. Okay. And he told you not to worry, I'm sure. He said. Okay. I'm not saying that. All right. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, the, uh, <coughs> general fund bills. the general fund bills. There's a number four general fund bills, construction fund bills, budget transfers, payroll for the month of April 2015, and the appointment of uh, treasurer for 2015-2016. Would that be you, Mr. Hall? It would be. You're running again, are you running unopposed again? Or? It would appear. You must be doing Is a good job. Is that You must be doing a you good job. You're talking about W. You must be talking about W. Okay, all that being said, I would like to, uh, I would like to make a motion to add to the finance, uh, to add the finance items to the legislative meetings, items four through eight, if I have that correctly. So Boy. moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Thank you. Okay, that's finished up. Let's move on to support services, and that would be Mr. Nudie. It doesn't look like you have anything no, there. there are no items on, okay. on the support services. However, uh, uh, Mr. Thomas, who couldn't be here this evening, uh, did give us a report. And he did, yeah. The, the highlight of that is uh, uh, the piping and the uh, pad for the chiller has been laid. Um, the chiller will be installed in the next work period. Everything is well ahead of schedule. I think they're uh, working on pulling up some of the loose towel at this point uh, 
to reduce that amount of work in the in the future. So okay. uh, everything is is definitely on okay. uh, on schedule. Thank you. We're ahead of schedule. Okay, uh, we, we are, we've reached to the point of the closing meeting. I just want to make one comment again to the millions at home watching on TV. May eighth, Friday is Arch Alive up yep. the hilltop yep. here, and I think that starts at what time? Uh, Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Which I know is always well attended, but uh, I, it's it's just really it really is a fun night. I mean, it really is to come up to the hilltop and, and see what's going on. So uh, I think it's for those of us here and for those of us at home, uh, Arch Alive is May eighth at the hilltop. That being said, do uh, can I just make one yes, comment? I'd just like to say, welcome back, Jake. We missed you. <laughs> yeah, okay, Jake. Good. Yeah. Uh, last, uh, uh, any additional public comments? Uh, anybody yeah, want to say anything on the, the meeting this evening? That being said, I'd like to. Uh, nobody wants to talk. Uh, we'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>